Mermaid In folklore, a mermaid is an aquatic creature with the head and upper body of a female human and the tail of a fish. Mermaids appear in the folklore of many cultures worldwide, including Europe, Asia, and Africa. Mermaids are sometimes associated with perilous events such as floods, storms, shipwrecks, and drownings. In other folk tradition, or sometimes within the same traditions, they can be benevolent, bestowing boons, or falling in love with humans. The male equivalent of the mermaid is the merman, also a familiar figure in folklore and heraldry. Although traditions about and sightings of mermen are less common than those of mermaids, they are generally assumed to coexist with their female counterparts. The male and the female collectively are sometimes referred to as merfolk or merpeople. The conception of mermaids in the West may have been influenced by the sirens of Greek mythology, which were originally half-bird-like, but came to be pictured as half-fish-like in the Christian era. Historical accounts of mermaids, such as those reported by Christopher Columbus during his exploration of the Caribbean, may have been sightings of manatees or similar aquatic mammals. While there is no evidence that mermaids exist outside folklore, reports of mermaid sightings continue to the present day. Mermaids have been a popular subject of art and literature in recent centuries, such as in Hans Christian Andersen's literary fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, in 1836. They have subsequently been depicted in operas, paintings, books, comics, animation, and live-action films. The word mermaid is a compound of the Old English mer, which means sea, and maid, which means a young girl or woman. The equivalent term in Old English was merwif. They are conventionally depicted as beautiful with long flowing hair. The ancient Greek mythological creature Siren was a basis for the Christian European mermaids in medieval times. The sirens were first conceived of as having the appearance of a human-headed bird in the early Greek period, but by the 3rd century BC, the Greeks described the siren as part fish, argonautica, or sporadically depicted it as such in art during the classical period. During the Middle Ages, their appearance increasingly shifted to that of part fish, a mermaid. Although when the siren was added to the Physiologus in the Latin version in 6th century, it was still textually described as part bird, and this held for some of these subsequent versions. The notion that the siren was mermaid-like began to appear. A 9th century Physiologus described the siren as bird-like, but supplied an illustration that was mermaid-like. This confusion of image was thought by some to be the influence of Teutonic myth, later expounded in literary legends of Lorelei and Undine. Though a dissenting comment is that parallels are not limited to Teutonic culture. The siren became picturalized as a mermaid and later textually described to match in medieval bestiaries. The explanation that the other part may be fish or bird is found in Guillaume Leclerc's verse Bestiary. These siren mermaids depicted in the so-called second family bestiaries typically held an eel in hand, though sometimes also a musical instrument as in classical art, or the mirror and comb as the symbol of vanity. The mermaid holding a comb and mirror, which is emblematic of mermaids across Europe, derives from the bestiaries that describe the siren as a vain creature requiring those accoutrements. The lore of sirens has been compared to that of the mermaids and their Slavic form Rusalka, etc., due to the commonality of having a human voice and the penchant of seducing sailors to their doom. The classical siren of Homer used their beautiful song to be more specific as their instrument of enticement, and this aspect has been transferred onto the mermaid in some cases. In Middle Eastern Origins 
Depictions of entities with tails of fish but with upper bodies of human beings appear in Mesopotamian artwork from the old Babylonian period onwards. On cylinder seals, these figures are usually mermen and called kululu, but mermaids do occasionally appear. The name for the mermaid figure may have been kuliltu, meaning fishwoman. Such figures were used in Neo-Assyrian art as protective figures and were shown in both monumental scripture and in small protective figurines. The mermaids of Greek and Roman mythology may have been brought from the Middle East, possibly transmitted by Phoenician mariners, or so Jane Ellen Harrison has speculated. In Phoenicia, or Syria, there was a mermaid goddess known as Terceto, a Targatis, to Greek writers, with her cult centered in Ashkelon, where her transformation myth is localized. According to information provided by Persian defector Cesias, later Lucian wrote a book on the Syrian goddess based on his own fieldwork, and though he saw the goddess, equated to Hera, represented as mermaid-like in some parts of Phoenicia, her grand statue was entirely human at her holy city. The best-known example of mermaids in literature is probably Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale, The Little Mermaid, first published in 1837. The title character, youngest of the merman king's daughters, must wait her turn to reach the age when she will be allowed to emerge from the sea and sit on a rock to observe the upper world. The mermaid falls in love with a human prince and also longs for an eternal soul like humans, despite the shorter lifespan. The two cravings are intertwined, only by achieving true love will her soul bind with a human's and become everlasting. But the mermaid's fishtail poses an insurmountable obstacle for enticing humans, and a sea witch offers a potion to transform into human form, at a price. The mermaid's tongue and beautiful voice. The mermaid endures the excruciating pain of having human legs, and despite her inability to speak, almost succeeds in wedding the prince, but for a twisted fate. The mermaid is doomed unless she stabs the prince with a magic knife before his marriage. But she does not have the resolve and dies the mermaid way, dissolving into foam.